the hotel in Bolton again. Uh, so that can only mean one thing. We've completed our engine break-in period of the few thousand miles. Um, it's time to nip back to Hartec now, get them to complete the final checks, and then should all be done. So I'll report back in after all that and let you know how, how it went. Um, and then I'll let you know what's coming up uh, later this month and next month. So here we are again then, um, about 10 miles from home, having come back from, uh, come back from Hartec. Final checks complete, um, we're just ticking over 3,000 miles now on the new engine. So Hartec have had the car back, uh, done the final checks, changed the uh, oil and filter, so the engine's on a... 1050 oil now. Um, I can feel the difference there actually. The, the engine does feel a bit, um, a bit smoother uh, than it did before, ever so slightly. You know, I guess that's to be expected. Um, still just as fun, of, of course. Um, So really not much to report in terms of what Hartec have just done. It's fairly straightforward. I did get them to change the fuel filter while they were there, just because I've, as I've been looking through the service history on this car and I can't see evidence that this, that's ever been done. And I've yeah, got over 90,000 miles on this car now, so definitely way overdue if it hasn't been done already. But anyway, that's done now. Um, during the engine break-in period, I put new brakes on the front as well. Uh, discs and pads, already got new discs and pads on the rear. So we've got new brakes all round. Um, and the other thing I've done whilst the engine was breaking in was the right-hand fan resistor, uh, which did fail um, at some point in my ownership, because it was working when I, uh, when I bought the car not that long ago. So, I replaced that as well. And I think that's it. I mean, in terms of like, thoughts for the, about the break-in period, you don't really have to, you don't really have to do anything that much different, to be honest. You've just got to be careful not to idle the engine too much. Don't labour the engine, so you know. Don't um, don't change up too early, or if you're going up a hill or something, knock it down a gear, that kind of stuff. But apart from that, I didn't really have to make any any sacrifices or hold up traffic or anything like that that you know, you'd normally associate with um, breaking an engine in. Didn't have to be careful, you know. Um, so I don't think, I mean, it, now that the engine's broken in fully, I don't think I'm going to be changing that much about the way I drive it, to be honest. But obviously that kind of closes the chapter on, uh, you know, my sort of direct engagement with, uh, with Hartec. Because in theory now, I mean, you know, they're not, they're not my local specialist, they're 200 miles away. So I might not ever see them again, you know, and, um, Hartec as a company, everyone's really professional, everyone's really nice, um, everyone seems competent, I mean, I genuinely don't have 
a criticism to let to, to level at them, to be honest. And I'm I'm one of those people that normally does everything themselves, um, including car stuff. There's some limitations. So I haven't got a garage, so I can't do anything where you really need a garage. I can't do anything where there's like anything that's like a two-man job, like changing diffs and gearboxes and stuff like that, engine work. Can't do any of that stuff. So when I do when I do have to do that, I don't always enjoy that process because you're giving your because this is my project at the moment, you're giving your project to someone else to look after for a while. And but in the case of Hartec, you know, obviously they're really hyped, they've got a really good reputation, and I have to say it's thoroughly deserved. They did, honestly, they deserve every success they get because I cannot fault them. You know, I can't, you know, in terms of what they've done to the car, the engine, whatever, um, and the service you get when you go there, and like I say, just just everything really. So there you go. There's my little parting note to uh, Hartec. There, I think they've done a pretty good job. Okay, so I said I'd do um, a bit of a, a sort of a costs update um, in this video as well and um, I'm just popping this in the middle of the video I forgot to go through it um, in the car so the short version of the costs update is that the uh, the sort of final checks that Hartec do are the yeah the cost of that is um, that sort of three to four hours labor is included in the price of the engine rebuild work um, so that kind of is what it is you pay a hundred pounds just for the oil and filter so that's all you pay there. But I did want to say like one other thing. Someone uh, someone sent me a, a link to a, a forum post whereby people were, it was a 9-11 forum, uh, people were discussing costs of engine, re engine rebuilds and things like that for their 996s, 997s. And somebody posted my video in there and um, I did see at least one or two people sort of saying, oh, well, you know, well, that's, uh, I didn't realize the, the, you know, the cost could be that high, blah, 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 whatever. I, I feel like I should address that um, because I think that my car isn't the kind of, the average kind of rebuild scenario that Hartec get through the door. So the reason for the cost for my car being so high are for two reasons really. The first reason is that the car is, like my car is actually relatively new to me. Um, it's one of those cars where, you know, it hasn't, it wasn't enthusiast owned or anything like that. It was just, actually tier two owners from new, last guy had it 20 years. And I could see through all the service history, like even when a suspension component needed replacing, they'd only replace one on one side of the car. And like when the radiator failed, on one side of the car, they only replaced that one. So, although the car had been maintained, technically, there was a lot of situations like that that needed addressing. And I think it's referred to as deferred maintenance. A lot of that sort of stuff was kind of, it just made sense to do whilst the engine and all that stuff was out and everything was out of the way. The second thing was the particular noise that my engine was making. Hartec could not be 100% sure that just by replacing the um, the small end bearings uh, on my engine that they'd actually fix that that knocking noise. And there was all these other all these other things it could have been. Um, so I made the decision to go ahead and just replace everything that it could be. Um, now and it's all you know engine internals. And it, it does add up, it adds up quickly, that sort of stuff. So I'm just going to rattle off just some of the stuff that was done over and above the usual rebuild or capacity conversion, right? So so you've got to bear in mind as well that, that the cost of my car in, covered in episode five includes stuff like, you know, the, the um, transportation of my car, that's not cheap. There was a, a valve guide set, oil cooler, water pump, chain tensioners, tap it set, connecting rods, exhaust clamps, exhaust brackets, clutch, clutch slave, slave cylinder, clutch slave uh, hoses, flywheel, vent lines, ignition coil covers, belt roller, starter motor, wiring harness section and the starter motor, 
oil pressure switch, coolant tank, engine mounts, gearbox mount, alternator refurb, brake pipes, cats, the list goes on, right? Um, that's a lot of stuff. So let's say you've got a 3.4, um, you've got an engine issue, you want a straight 3.4 rebuild, you would be looking at around 10K um, plus taxes. And if you wanted the capacity conversion as well, it's around in the region of 12K plus taxes. I just thought that worthwhile to point out. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, uh, back to the video. So, what next? So I've got a subscriber or viewer coming up to see me uh, at the end of this month. He has a, a Hartec built 997.1 Carrera 3.6. Uh, and we're gonna do a, a comparison with the 3.6 engine. As we know, as you know, we've already done a comparison with the 3.4 and this car, so now we get to do a 3.6. Then immediately after that, like two, three weeks after, I've actually got this car booked at a top speed event at Elvington Airfield in Yorkshire. And in the summer, I want to, you know, find some really good roads, give it a proper drive on some really nice roads, and then just kind of, you know, give my final thoughts. Yeah, so before the top speed run, the car will have uh, two new tyres on the back, uh, getting the wheels refurbished. I'm going to have the air conditioning recommissioned properly and a full rebuild of the rear suspension. So that's every single suspension arm, shocks, springs, everything back there is getting refreshed because basically everything is original and it's a bit like it's all it's all fine, it's all working, but it's all a bit crusty, looks a bit tired. So I'm going to do that as well. So that would put the car in, I would say, pretty good shape. So yeah, at that point, I'll give the car to JM if he's still interested. Um, and he can, he can have a go at it and give his, uh, give his views. Then I was going to say, well, I can wrap this series up. But actually, I don't want to wrap it up there because... I think there's more there's more to come from this car and I would like to compare this engine to as many other 911s as I can so in particular I want to do you know the 3.8 the 997 Carrera S 3.8 would be a good one to do and possibly even the Hartec 3.9 um, 3.8 I'm really keen on so if you've got a 3.8 I'll put my I'll put my um, details in the description um, reach out I'd love to do a sort of a comparison with that because I have heard that the performance between this and a 997 Carrera S is actually very similar very similar so that would be interesting to see which one see which car comes out on top but for now it's all about just enjoying the car. I mean, in theory, I can do whatever I like with it now. The engine's all broken in. It's on its proper oil. So, time to have some fun, I think. And uh, it's just the right time of year for that. Oh, my God. <laughs> A TL. Yeah, it's in good... It's on good form now. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a, a fun spring summer, I think, with this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, this is a lot of fun. All right, I'll, uh, for now, uh, thank you very much for following, if you have been, and uh, I'll see you for the next one.